Hello everyone and welcome back to the series of Digital Logic Design and today we will study about the decoders. Discrete quantities of information are represented in digital systems by binary code as we have studied in the lecture of binary code that these codes can be used to assign or represent various information in the form of binary codes and we know that a binary code of n bits is capable of representing 2 power n distinct elements of coded information and a decoder is a combination circuit that converts binary information from n input line to the maximum of 2 power n unique output line or in another way if we are implementing these binary codes on the hardware then we will use a decoder circuit. If the n bit coded information has some unused combination then the decoder may have fewer than 2 power n outputs like if we have 5 discrete set of elements and for making binary codes 3 bits will be required where possible combination with the 3 bits are 8 and the used combination are 5 so we may have 3 unused combination and in this case the output will be less than 2 power 3. The decoders presented here are normally mentioned by n to m line decoder where m is less or equal to 2 power n. The purpose of decoder is to generate 2 power n or less than 2 power n min terms for the given n input binary variable and each combination of input will assert a unique binary code. The name of the decoder is also used in conjunction with other converters such as BCD to 7 segment decoder. As an example, consider the 3 to 8 line decoder circuit shown in the figure. We know that for 3 binary variable, we have 8 possible input combination and each combination correspond to a 1 min term. Here, the 3 inputs are decoded into 8 output and each output represent one of the min terms of the three input variable. Also in the circuit, inverters are used to provide the complement of the input and each one of the eight AND gates generate one of the min term. A particular application of this decoder is binary to octal conversion. The binary to octal conversion circuit is a such a circuit to which a binary input is applied and octal output is achieved. The input variables represent a binary number and the output represent 8 of the number in the octal number system. However, a 3 to 8 line decoder can also be used for decoding any 3 bit code to provide 8 output and one output will be used for each element of the code. Now the operation of decoder for binary to octal conversion may also be clarified by the truth table. For octal output we have 8 possible output combinations and for this we will require a minimum of 3 bits which are represented by x, y and z and the possible combinations are also listed in the input portion of the truth table and the outputs are represented by the variables from D0 to D7. In such case, the output will be dependent on the input and for each possible input combination, we will have 7 outputs that will be equal to 0 and only one output will be equal to 1. The output whose value is equal to 1 represents the min term equivalent of the binary number currently available in the input line. This means that whatever input you have applied, the corresponding output will be equal to 1 and rest of the outputs will be equal to 0. So far we have studied the decoders constructed with the AND gate, but some decoders are constructed with the NAND gate. since a NAND gate produces the AND operation with an inverted output. It becomes more economical to generate the decoder min terms in their complemented form. 
Furthermore, the decoders include one or more enable input to control the circuit operation. Which means that if enable is disabled, then your circuit will not work. So here we have a 2 to 4 LAN decoder with an enable input and this is constructed with NAND gate as shown in the figure. This 2 to 4 LAN decoder operates with complemented output and complemented enable input which means that the decoder is enabled whenever the enable input is equal to 0 because this is based on active low logic or we will call it active low enable input. As we said that the circuit operates with complemented outputs and this can also be verified from the truth table that only one output will be equal to zero at any given time and all other outputs will be equal to one. Now the output whose value is equal to 0 represents the min term selected by the input lines A and B and the circuit is disabled when the enable input is equal to 1 regardless the value of the other two inputs. So whenever the circuit is disabled, none of the outputs are equal to 0 and no min term is selected. In general, a decoder may operate with complemented or uncomplemented output. Similarly, the enable input may be activated with zero or with one signal. This all depends on the design criteria or the requirements of the system. Sometimes we use a decoder which have two or more enable input and these inputs must satisfy a given logic condition in order to make active the given circuit. Now here the enable inputs play an important role in decoders like decoders with enable input can be connected together to form a larger decoder circuit or we can say that a larger decoder circuit can be implemented with smaller decoder by utilizing the enable input. For example, we have to implement a 4 to 16 line decoder with the help of 3 to 8 line decoder and for this purpose we will utilize the enable input. The circuit diagram and the truth table both are shown here. Here we are implementing 4 to 16 line decoder with 3 to 8 line decoder. So the four lines used here are W, X, Y and Z. The lines X, Y and Z will act as input to the 3 to 8 line decoder and the W input will be utilized as a enable input. Like if you observe the truth table, if W equals to 0, we have 8 combinations from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1 which corresponds to output from D0 to D7 and whenever W is equal to 1 again we have combinations of 000 to 111 and corresponding to these inputs we have output from D8 to D15. So whenever W is equal to 0 the first decoder will be enabled and the output min term will depend on input combination of x, y and z and we can have output from d0 to d7. Similarly, if w is equal to 1, we can have output from d8 to d15 and this depends on again on the value of x, y and z because these values are common to the both decoders. Now continuing the example. Whenever W equals to 0, the top decoder is enabled and the other one is disabled. The bottom decoder outputs are all zeros. And the top 8 outputs generate the min terms from 0000 to 0111. Now whenever W equals to 1, the enable conditions are reversed. Which means that the bottom decoder is now enabled 
and the top decoder is now disabled. So the output of top decoder will be zero and the bottom decoder will generate the min terms from 1000 to 1111. These examples demonstrate the usefulness of enable input in decoder and other combinational logic component. In general, enable outputs are a convenient feature for interconnecting two or more standard components for the purpose of combining them into a similar function with more inputs and output. Or we can say that a higher logic can be implemented with smaller logic with the help of enable input. Also note that the feature of enable input is not limited to the decoders only. It can be used in other combinational logic components as well. Now we will study how to implement a function with the help of decoder. Normally, a function can have a value of 1 or 0 and in standard form, it can be represented with the sum of product form or in the product of sum form. For instance, if we have a function which is represented in the sum of product form, then this function can also be implemented with the help of decoders. Like a decoder provides 2 power n min term for an input variable and each asserted output of the decoder is associated with a unique pattern of input bits or the min terms. Now, any boolean function can be expressed in the sum of min term form and we know that the decoder generates min terms of the function. Now, if we combine the min terms of the function with an external OR gate that forms the logical sum give us the hardware implementation of the given function. So in this way, any combinational circuit with n inputs and m outputs can be implemented with n to 2 power n line decoder and m or gates. Now the procedure for implementing a combinational circuit by means of a decoder and OR gate requires that the boolean function for the circuit must be expressed in the sum of min terms form. Then in second step, a decoder is chosen that generates all the min terms of the input variable. Or we can say that we choose the order of decoder in second step. In third step, input to each OR gate are selected from the decoder outputs according to the list of min term of each function. Like we will make truth table of the function and then depending on the min terms for each input combination, the corresponding output min term will be applied as an input to the OR gate. And with this procedure, we will demonstrate the example of a full adder circuit. A full adder is a circuit which adds 3 bits of the input and give sum and carry in the output. The truth table of a full adder circuit is also given here. Now from the truth table, we obtain the function for the combinational circuit in the form of min terms. The sum and the carry both functions are represented here in the form of min terms. Like sum have a min terms of 1, 2, 4 and 7 where carry have min terms at 3, 5, 6 and 7. Since there are 3 inputs and a total of 8 min terms, so we need a 3 to 8 line decoder. Now in the figure, 3 to 8 line decoder is mentioned which have the inputs of x, y and z and have 8 outputs which starts from 0 to 7. Now the decoder generates 8 min terms which depends on the input value of x, y and z. The OR gate for the output of sum forms the logical sum of min terms 1, 2, 4 and 7. Where the OR gate for the output of carry forms the logical sum of min terms at 3, 5, 6 and 7. So using the decoder, we can implement any given function which is in the form of sum of min terms. Thanks for watching the video and stay connected for more interesting videos.